Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be going over on upgrading and maintenance on a Dell Inspiron 11 3000 series. So let's get right in the video. This is a Dell Inspiron 113168 that I picked up at my local pawn shop for $60 including tax. The machine looks in perfect condition with no cracks and everything seems to be working perfectly fine. Although opening programs such as Edge or even as simple as File Explorer does take an amount of time to open, which shouldn't be. The Inspiron is a 2-in-1 touchscreen laptop with a very small screen measuring at 11.6 inches. The specs that my laptop ship with is a dual-core Intel Pentium, 4GB of DDR3 RAM, 500GB hard drive, and the Intel HD graphics. There isn't really much talk about this laptop since I did not record a lot of video footage and I know my viewers wouldn't like photos as a b-roll footage as part of the introduction. But of course, I do apologize about that since I'm recording this on a phone with 32GB of storage. And I am limited with storage at the moment, but in the near future I'll improve my quality as we go. Here are the following parts and maintenance I'll be doing today. A 2.5 240 data SSD. And lastly, thermal paste. That's it. Just a disclaimer for you, the viewer, which is you, who is getting ready to buy all the parts for your Inspiron 3168, I wouldn't do that just yet until you hear me out. From the research I have done, if your Inspiron ship with an Intel Celeron processor, or if the storage is 32 gigabytes, unfortunately your laptop model is not upgradable by any way as the RAM and storage is soldered in the motherboard. Of course, I want to clarify this since I don't want people to spend all the parts on your laptop until realizing your computer is not upgradable. Only if you have this Celeron variant. Now let's get back right into the fun part. When upgrading any laptop, always turn off the system and remove the power adapter and battery so no power is on the system. Flip the laptop over and you will see 9 screws to unscrew. 9, you may ask? Well, there is a hidden screw located at the middle of the bottom cover, which of course you won't be able to see it because there is a screw cover hidden. In order to remove the screw cover, you simply use a pair of tweezers to remove it and from there you will see the hidden screw. Now you can unscrew the 9 screws holding the bottom cover of the laptop and keep the screws at a safe place like what I'm doing. FYI, there is no screws located at the rubber feet on this model. Once all the 9 screws are removed, what we want to do is remove the bottom cover of the laptop. And in order to do that, we must pry the bottom cover. I know that this might be hard for some people, as we do not want to break any clips of the base cover. But trust me, this one's not too hard at all. For my recommendation, I suggest you to start at the corner of the hinge and then make it all the way to the bottom. Using your fingernails, prying tool, or debit card, which in my case will be my trusty fingernails, you will see a gap between the base cover and the palm rest. You want to insert your prying tool of choice between the two and slowly work around it, like shown in the video. Be very patient when doing this, as like I mentioned earlier, we do not want to break any clips of the bottom cover. Luckily, I did not break any clips during the process, but maybe you will. So work around the bottom cover nice and slowly. Once you are finished prying the bottom cover, lift the bottom cover up and from here we have access to the RAM, storage, CPU and etc. But before we start upgrading, let's disconnect the battery of this laptop before we start touching the electronics since we do not want any power on the system 
because we do not want a short circuit on the motherboard, which will cause a huge problem. Just to make myself clear, we are not going to remove the battery, but disconnect the ripper cable that is connected to the motherboard. This is a bit tricky to do, so follow along. In order to do that, using your fingernails, insert each of your fingernails on the small tab and then wiggle it as you go, and the battery connection should disconnect as shown in the video. Now, let's replace the hard drive, shall we? There is three screws holding the hard drive in place, but there is one screw in particular that we have to take care of first, which is a screw that is underneath the ribbon cable, which is preventing from both removing the hard drive and unscrewing the screw. To disconnect the ribbon cable, all you have to do is lift a black latch upwards and pull the cable gently towards you, as shown in the video. This might be a bit tricky if you have big fingers, but for people like me who have small fingers, this won't be a challenge at all. Well, that's what I think. So let me know in the comment section down below. After disconnecting the ribbon cable from the motherboard, we then want to unscrew all three screws that hold the hard drive in place. Once all the three screws are removed, we can pull out the hard drive. Once the hard drive is out, we then want to transfer the hard drive bracket to our SSD. In order to do this, unscrew all four screws located at the sides of the hard drive, and once the bracket is removed, then screw back to place on the SSD. After the bracket is screwed on the SSD, it is time to install our new storage drive in our laptop. Insert the SSD to the SATA slot drive and make sure it aligns to the screw holes. Then screw all the three screws back in place. Also, make sure to connect the ribbon cable to the motherboard again once finishing installing the hard drive. It's the same process as I showed you earlier but backwards. Let's now go over on the RAM. However, in this video, I'm not going to upgrade the RAM on this machine because, well, I'm too poor to buy one. <laughs> but I will say this. According to legends, the max amount of RAM the Inspiron can be upgraded is 8GB. Of course, I say this because I don't have one laying around. So I can't confirm this is true. But it is said it's possible based on the Dell forum since supposedly on the official Dell website, the max amount of RAM this Inspiron can be upgraded is 4GB. But apparently this is not true. But I'll show you anyways on how to remove and install the RAM just in case if someone is in need to upgrade their machine. Using your both thumbs, spread apart the clips on each end of the RAM like shown in the video. The RAM itself will lift up slash pop up and from here we can remove the RAM. To install our RAM again, simply align the RAM set with the RAM slot, slide the RAM slot firmly and then press the RAM down. You should hear a click when installing it. Last but not least is our maintenance. For our maintenance, I'm going to remove the old thermal paste from this laptop and add in fresh thermal paste to the CPU in order to prevent from overheating or frying the CPU. But in order to get access to the CPU, we have to remove the metal shield to expose the CPU. On the metal shield, unscrew the four screws. Once the screws are removed, then you can remove the metal shield and here we have access to the CPU. Next, we need to remove the old gunk of thermal paste on both the CPU and the metal shield. In order to do this, you're going to need alcohol and a microfiber clinging cloth to remove the old thermal paste, as alcohol is a non-conductive liquid to electronics unlike water. Once the thermal paste is removed from both the CPU and the metal shield, 
we now want to add thermal paste on the CPU. However, in this part of the video, I am going to censor the process simply because I do not want to have a comment war or being rose on how do you properly add thermal paste on the CPU. So I suggest you to watch some videos on the best way to add thermal paste on the CPU to any electronic machine. Once fresh thermal paste is added, we then want to put the metal shield back together and install the bottom cover on the laptop again. But before we do this, let's not forget to connect the battery cable to the motherboard again so it will power on the system once again. Furthermore, it is also a good idea to turn on the system without installing the bottom cover yet to see if the system will turn on just in case if I didn't find the motherboard. Hopefully not. As you can see, the Inspiron lives once again by seeing the Dell logo pop up and afterwards a pop up error shows up stating that there is no bootable devices found. Which of course this is supposed to happen because the storage that we install on the Inspiron is a blank data and of course there is no OS installed on the storage which we need to install an OS on this machine after I install the bottom cover. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video helped you out even though I did talk a bit too much. But nevertheless, I'll see you on the next one.